Chop park. Car parking ticket. It's the same ticket for both days. Thank you very much. Be right. lucky. Be lucky. Rob, Rob and Pete. Not many, not many pegs in here. Yeah, this is mine first. I'll do it, Pete can do it Yeah, Pete can do it That's good. 69, great. 69 for Rob. 69 for Rob. Yeah. Oh, Rob. Fantastic, mate. And 47 for Pete. Yeah, I think he's got that, mate. You got it down? Yeah, I've got him down, yeah. Top job. Thank you. What a wonderful day to be on the bank. We are at the beautiful, fabulous, fantastic, it's one of my favorite venues, which is Ferry Meadows. Now we have drew what I think could be a good peg. This is peg 69. It's on the famous monument. So let me turn you around. There's the monument. We've got Jeff Ringer on the next peg for company. So, Jeff, Paul Cook, Richie Edmonds on this peg round here. And then I think there's a big gap in the bay. And then we go round to 63, I think is the next peg after the bay. But we are on peg 69, middle of the lake. It's usually a pretty consistent area this is. And the weather is absolutely spot on for bream fishing. Overcast, nice breeze, it's stunning. So, I think what we'll do is we'll run through the kit, run through the bait, run through the approach, and show you what I'm going to do today. First things first, though, let's get down here. We've got the snacks, because obviously I know you guys are interested in the snacks. We've got a bottle of water, banana for the old energy, some breakfast bars, and because Easter's just gone, and because my lads at home are, are awful to me, they're constantly on at me, I've stole one of their Easter eggs, so I'm going to eat that today. Right, let's get down there. Have a look at the kit. So, kit-wise, obviously it's all feeder fishing today. We're going to be fishing at 55 metres. So, not a mega chuck, but we want gear that's going to be capable of getting us, getting us out there. So this is the kit. We've got the old highest power feeder. This is free, a free spirit rod braid on the reel and we've got a shock leader of double the length of the rod so you can see there let's see if you can get in on that there's the shock leader knot and that goes up the rod and then down we've just got 12 pound m tech there as a shock leader we want something that's not going to let us down now the rig you can probably see is a helicopter rig let's get you down here on the rod rest so i can show you We've got a helicopter rig. So our hook length is going to attach to this little, I don't know what you'd call them, quick change swivel. And then we've got a drop of about five inches and our feeder is going to attach to that. Benefit of this rig is it's just a little bit less tangle, a little bit less tangle prone. So we want to be fishing as often as possible out there. We don't want any tangles. We want to be fishing for as long as possible during the match. And obviously this rig just helps with that. So hook length will clip on there. If I want to, I suppose I could lengthen that drop there, but I, I don't generally do that for, for bream fishing. I think five inches is, a, is about the right length for this sort of thing. When you're fishing this way, you've just got to make sure that you tighten up your quiver tip because if you're not careful, you will be hooking the fish against the feeder and they'll be feeling the feeder too quickly before you see the bite. And quite often, sometimes they can shake, shake the hook out against the weight of the feeder, especially for smaller fish, not necessarily for bigger fish. They'll zoom off and hook themselves. Just talking about tips, let's just bring this down here. See if I can do it one-handed. 
like the easiest of jobs. We've got in, in the rod, look at that. Beautiful tip. This is a new glass tip for the free spirit rods. 1.25 this is, 1.25 ounces. Nice glass tip. Obviously we could be catching skimmers today. Hopefully it's gonna to tow around with a bream on the end, but we could be catching smaller fish such as like skimmers and the odd roach. I think a glass tip's just gonna show, show those bites up a little bit better. So that is the kit. Like I say, 55 meters is the distance. Hook length wise, get his rod back. Hook length wise, we've got a couple of different options. We've got, probably can't see that, 014 to a, to a 14, 016 to a 12. We're not messing around today. Proper decent hooks. That is low vis. Hook length line, and that is a series 18 hook. So proper proper gear. They're tied up on meter lengths, but I can always cut that down during the day, depending on what's going on. We've got the ever faithful stopwatch out, and then a selection of feeders. This is going to be my sort of like baiting up starting feeder. Put some baiting with that feeder at the start. And then we've got a nice selection of feeders here. I like these little bottom weighted cages, they cast beautifully. You can have your ground bait different consistencies inside them and then we've got a couple of window feeders obviously we've got a box full of feeders behind us but i think this is what we're, we're getting out to start with now bait wise we've got our ground bait a swim stim green mixed with a tiny bit of swim stim dark i just think the, the swim stim green sometimes a little bit too bright so i've just dulled it down a bit because if you look at the water I mean, you might be able to see there, but it's ever so clear the water is. So I'm just trying to dull that ground bait down slightly. So it's green mixed with some dark. Then we've got our casters, some of Willy Worm's finest dendrobinas. We've already got some chop there. Again, just some dead maggots from Willy Worms there. We've got a few hooker maggots. Maggots has been a good bait here. So we've got a few different colours there. We've got an escapee there. You're not getting away, mate. And then we've just got a few, like I say, willy worms. Do a sterling job and they do these little, little dendrobenas. So I've got a few little dendrobenas. I've not had a chance. I love red worms as a bait. I've not had a chance to go and get some. We were at a football tournament yesterday with my eldest lad. So I didn't get a chance to go to the muck heap to get a load of worms. So they're going to be my hook bait if I want to put on a worm. Around here, just got some spare ground bait in an EVA case that keeps you out of the way. And that is about it. I think tactics wise, eight or 10 feeder falls of bait, that big feeder at the start, and then just see how it goes. I think at Ferry Meadows, you can quite often top it up as the day goes on. So if we are struggling or we feel that some fish have been in the peg and then they've drifted off, I think we can top it up and sort of restart the day, kickstart the swim. But whatever happens, it's gonna be a beautiful day. There's two grand for the winner over this two day event. We fish today and then we fish again tomorrow. Totally different peg tomorrow. And like I say, two grand for the winner. Money all the way down, I think to like 10 for 12th place. So loads of money up, to, for, up for grabs. A beautiful venue to fish a match on as well. And the fish in here at the minute are absolutely massive. Chance of a nine or 10 pounder today. And that is a big old bream that is. So. Wish me luck. That's it, Jeff.
tell you what, Jeff, you couldn't have put these in better with your hand. It's going out beautifully. I've not put enough too much bait in Jack. Right folks, update time. Let me tell you, it is fishing terrible. Hardly anyone on the lake's caught a fish. We're halfway through now. Jeff's not had a bite. Paul Cook next peg to Jeff has not had a bite. Then around the corner there's two fish and one fish. So just around the corner there's the odd fish, but we are biteless. So we're going through the, the trick book at the minute. Trouble is I don't want to cast too regularly and try too many things because I think it's going to be, if we do get a visit from anything, it's going to be late on and I don't want to blow the peg when it gets to that stage. So. Just plodding on, we're still at that distance, at 55 metres. Been through bigger feeders, smaller feeders, putting a bit of worm in, all that sort of thing. Like I said, I don't want to blow it because I think sort of last hour and a half, last hour, that's going to be our chance today. I mean, it's a two day event, so all we're looking to do is just put something on the board today and hopefully we draw on a few fish tomorrow. I think fence end, that's always a good area further down the lake, miles down there. That's always a good area. Phil's drew down there today. I think he's had a couple of fish. So we're just hoping for a late arrival. The next day. Well, folks, let me tell you, that didn't go to plan. Big fat blank for me. The fish just never turned up. Jeff on my right, he ended up catching three or four fish really late. So obviously the fish was moving from the right just never got to me in time. Don't get me wrong, yesterday's peg, I take that peg every single time, but I just think yesterday's conditions and how the venue's fishing at the minute, the fish are in areas, they're not tending to move around much. You know, we were a little bit unlucky, I guess. But it's a two day event, today's a totally different day, and we drew a totally different part of the lake. Look at this for a beautiful setting. 
not exactly bream fishing conditions. We need a little bit more wind, I'm guessing. But this is peg 93. So I think in normal conditions, normal circumstances, this is a peg that I would, I'd be quite happy sitting on. I said that about yesterday's swim though. Now we're going to use almost exactly the same tactics as yesterday, we're using the same kit, same setup, same ground bait, everything's the same. I just feel that we need to tweak it a little bit, maybe put in less loose offerings, less chop worm, less maggots, make more ground bait orientated today, I think. The good news is that the weather's beautiful. The bad news is this peg blanked yesterday. So yesterday there wasn't many fish around here, but today's a different day, totally different conditions. And I'm hoping we have a totally different result to yesterday.
Oh, that was another tough day on the bank. It's beautiful being at Ferry Manors. It's a lovely place to be, but I just wish the fish would move around a little bit more because it's been very patchy once again. I've managed to avoid the dreaded blank. We've only had three skimmers though. We've had three, four roach as well to go with them. Now, a skimmer at Ferry Meadows, it's up for debate. The average size of fish is quite big at Ferry Meadows. So what would be a skimmer at Ferry Meadows might be a proper bream as the further north you go. You know, that dividing line is a, is a little bit vague. But we've had three skimmers, few roach. We're never going to trouble with the winners with that. It's a weight festival. So we've tipped the fish back. We've walked off with our tails between our legs. We're going to try again. Now, this video, I was always going to upload it because I think it's important to just to show that not every day goes to plan. You know, you watch a lot of videos, you watch a lot of people, you read a lot of articles, and it seems like everyone has the perfect day every single time they go out on the bank. That's just not the case. Every time you go out on the bank, you're at the mercy of the elements, the mercy of those fish. They're not everywhere on the lake sometimes. Sometimes they're a little bit isolated and you need a bit of luck. You need to draw near the fish to actually catch them. Now, Phil Ringer, who is a fantastic feeder angler, has managed to do that. He's won the festival. He managed to have a brilliant day yesterday. He had, he had like over 80 pound yesterday on its own. So we were always fishing for second place after that and we needed to draw well as well to get anywhere near that. So well done, Phil. He's run a brilliant weekend as well. You've got to give him credit for that. Until next time, I will be trying my hardest to loosen up my drawing arm and hopefully we'll get on a few fish. Tight lines, folks.